position. Okay? So uh, this uh, equivalence relation has effectively partitioned your set A into the union of disjoint uh, residue classes. Okay. So uh, important result, and we will use that uh, certainly next chapter. All right. Uh, okay. So there's this sort of a summary of what, I've, what I've just been saying. Okay. So A is the union of disjoint residue classes. And each of these is, is uh, disjoint relative to the others, all the others. Okay, how about some examples now of, of residue classes? Now, what is a residue class again? It's a subset. Every member of that subset is equivalent to all the other members of that subset. Right? They're all equivalent. And if you have a second subset, uh, all its members are equivalent to each other within that second subset. But none of them are equivalent to any member of the first subset. The, those two subsets are disjoint. Right? Okay, uh, so let's have a popular uh, um, a set P. So A would be P. It's a population of, I oh know, some population anywhere. Um, and the equivalence relation is uh, two, so two members of this population, X and Y, they are uh, equivalent. If these two people, X and Y, are born in the same year, right? That's the definition of the equivalence relation. Now, it is, it, it's, it is an equivalence relation. You, know, you could prove that fairly readily just by showing the three properties: uh, reflexive, uh, symmetric, and transitive. Holds. You know, it's not too difficult. Okay. So uh, for this, for this um, residue. Uh, Equivalent, equivalent, equivalence uh, relation. Wiggle, tiggle, uh, tilde. What, uh, what are the equivalence classes? Well, they are the subpopulations, uh, of all all of whose members are born in the same year. Right. So this this uh, this subset here could be all those people born in 1947. That, that would be one equivalence class because every every member of that subset were born in 47. Okay, so so any two members of this are equivalent because they're born in the same year. They satisfy that equivalence relation, right? And another subset, a, a different uh, equivalence class, would be all those people in this population born in 1948, and so on. Okay? Uh, you go down that way, eventually your, your subsets will get smaller and smaller until yeah, there's none left. And uh, if you go this way, uh, eventually you'll hit uh, next year and they're not born yet, so zero. Okay, so, um, so the equivalence classes are the subset of people born in a given year, right, for each year. So there will be, uh, I don't know, 123 or whatever. Uh, different uh, equivalence classes. Uh, 123, that's the world record. This is some French woman, Clement. Or, you know, she, she lived 123. That's uh, the old, world's oldest person in history. Uh, she's uh, in the Guinness Book of Records. All right. Uh, okay, here's another example. Um, the equivalence relation is uh, bet between two elements X and Y if five divides their difference, divides the difference between x and y, and the set is the set of integers. So these x and y are just integers belonging to, to z. So what are the equivalence classes for this, for this uh, equivalence relation? Uh, well, um, they, they are the numbers that have this property. So uh, for example, it would be the set Remember, it's a subset. Equivalence class is a subset of your your uh, original set A, right? and they're all equivalent. So that would be the numbers, the integers: zero, plus minus five, plus minus ten, plus minus fifteen, and so on. Right? And now all those numbers are uh, this. They're all uh, congruent uh, to zero mod five. So the, the numbers of the set I've just given you would be this one. It would be the residue class um, uh, um, uh, what's 
the word? Forgetting. Anyway, so that that's that's uh, the residue class when your numbers are zero plus minus five plus minus ten and so forth. Now uh, these, this is another uh, distinct um, subset compared to this one. These these two are disjoint. They're all they're all disjoint from each other you know, because uh, they're residue classes. So the, this no, these numbers, set of numbers, infinite set, would be uh, of the form uh, one, and then uh, plus or minus five plus one, plus or minus ten plus one, plus or minus fifteen plus one. Right? So that, that's these, and, and and similarly for these. So this one, for example, would be uh, four plus or minus five plus four plus or minus ten plus four, and so on. Right? And all all these numbers are different from each other. These these subsets are all distinct. Right? So the residue classes for this for this equivalence relation are these five subsets. Right? In other words, they're members. Of this, of Z5, and they are I'm trying to remember the word. It's, uh, maybe I don't. <laughs> should, should have more calories. <coughs> uh, resi residue, residue class. Yes, that's it. They, these are residue classes. So uh, the, the equivalence class is a residue class. Uh, one of the elements of this set. All right. Now this next one, uh, C, example C, is particularly interesting because it uh, it links um, uh, equivalence classes and cosets. And uh, I'll spend quite a bit of uh, theory on it, and in fact probably most of the next board after this one. Uh, because there, there is quite a bit of theory, uh, it gets uh, quite dense. So, uh, so by by choosing a particular kind of uh, equivalence relation uh, of this form. So, um, if you have uh, a group G uh, and H is a subgroup of that G, and A and B are just you know, random members of the, your group G, then if uh, a inverse B, that product, belongs to the subgroup H, uh, then this, uh, this, this relation here you will prove, that's what this is, will prove that it's an equivalence relation. And then, uh, then we can start extracting um, some interesting properties of this uh, equivalence relation, like for example, um, the equivalence class of A, so just A bar, is in fact equal to the coset of A, right? uh, where you H is your subgroup. Okay? So in this particular case, so it's a very interesting case, uh, when, when your equivalence relation is defined this way, then uh, it, works, it, it works out that the, um, the uh, equivalence class of A is equal to the coset of A. Also, um, it, we can also show that uh, if, if A and B belong to the same coset here, if they're, in the, if they're members of the same coset, uh, well, if, if A and B uh, belong to the same coset, uh, if and only if uh, the the equivalence class of A is equal to the equivalence class of B. So if, if they belong to the, co the same coset, then A bar equals B bar. And back the other way, because it's if and only if. So if uh, the equivalence class of A is the same as equivalence class of B, that implies that A and B, these two members, belong to the same coset. Right? Now th this is talking equivalence classes, and this is talking cosets. Right? Different, different topics, but in this particular uh, case, uh, where your equivalence uh, uh, relation is is of this form, in, in this special case, you you get these intimate links between uh, uh, equivalent classes and cosets. So. Uh, 
Now I've run out of board, and, and I, <laughs> I'll need a lot of board to actually prove this. So I'll prove two things. I'll, I'll, probably, you know, I'll prove this first, I think, and then uh, this, this one second. And they require a mixing, uh, fairly not, not trivial, a mixing of uh, three, well, at least two theorems. So 46, uh, go back to your coset chapter, coset lecture. And have a look at 46, that's uh, a theorem uh, about uh, cosets. And theorem 55, which is the previous one, in the previous session, that's about uh, equivalence classes, right? And, and C. So this is example C. So you know, this, with, with this, this kind of uh, equivalence relation, that you define this way. Now you put those three together, uh, uh, in a, in a non-trivial way, uh, you end up proving this, right? So if A, B in the same coset, if and only if uh, these two equivalence classes are the same, that's one result, and another, well, two, because if and only if. And this one, that um, the equivalence class A is actually the same as the coset A. Right? Okay, so I'll... Uh, I'll stop there and uh, clean the board, uh, because, and, and, and then prove these two, because uh, I need a lot of space.